Nairobi Baptist Church. And this service is going to be a special one. Do you want to know why? Because today is our very own child-led service. Come on, let's give a round of applause. just stand up as we pray for the service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the gift of life, for the gift of health, and for the gift of salvation. I pray that even as we are about to start this service, that you'll be able to watch over us and guide us and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is now my humble duty, pleasure, and honor to invite you to join us in praise and worship. Come on, let's give it up for the praise and worship team.
as we enter a time of worship, just lift up your hands. Just think about what God has done for you. Because He can move mountains, can't He? He can move mountains, can't He? So just lift up your hands and glorify Him.
desire, our desire is to worship him, the king of kings. Our desire is to exalt his name. Our desire is just to go before him and tell him, yes, God, you alone, you are worthy. You alone, God, you are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted high. You are worthy to be lifted on high, Jehovah Jireh. You are worthy to be lifted. Church, let's, let's lift the name of the Lord and tell him that he's worthy. He's worthy of our praises. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be called God. He's worthy because he's our provider. He's worthy because he's our savior. He's worthy because he's our redeemer. He's worthy because he's the one who blesses us. He's worthy because he's the one who protects us. He's worthy because he's the one who shields us. He's worthy because he's the one who guides us. Let's just go before God and tell him why he is worthy. Tell him all the vocabularies, all the nouns that pronounce the name of the Lord and tell him who he is. Tell him how worthy he is. Just mention some of the things that ascribes him as worthy. He is worthy in our lives. He is worthy in our lives. He is worthy in our families. He is worthy in our families because he's fought for us. He has been there for us. He's been there for us. He's been there for Nairobi Baptist. He's been there for you that even today you've come here and you are just saying, thank you, Jesus. You alone, you are worth. You alone, you are my strength. You are my shield. You alone, you are God who saves. You alone, you are the one who can change my destiny. And today I say, God, you alone, you are worthy. Let's just go before God and tell him. Tell him how worthy he is in your life. 
Tell him how worthy he is in your Christian walk. Tell him how worthy he is in your life. In the name of Jesus, let's go before him. He's given us rain. He's given us good environment. He's given us health. Yes, God is worth. Yes, Jesus is worth. He is worth. He has blessed our family. He is worth. He has protected our family. He is worth. He has woken us up. He is worth. He has given us an opportunity to worship Him. He is worth. He has given us an opportunity to come to church and to say, Yes, God, you are worth. You are worthy. Regardless of the situation that we are passing through, our God is worthy. Regardless of the circumstances, our God is worthy. Regardless of the diseases, our God is worthy. Regardless of our struggles, God alone is worthy because He's the one who can rescue us. He's the one who can save us. He's the one who can remove us from that situation and put us in the right place. In the name of Jesus. Let's all sing that song. To you, may my spirit be you are my heart, desire, and I want to walk. One more time, say, You are Lord. Church, I want us to take this time to pray for several needs that's in our midst. And if you are there and you are sick, if you are there and you have a desire that God will touch you, if you are there and you've lost your loved one, or you have any prayer request, just lift up your hands so that we can commit you before God, before the King of Kings, who is able to see and who is able to rescue. Just lift up your hands and I will, I'll ask your neighbor to start interceding. Just let's pray for those hands. Let's pray for several needs. They are known to God. Let's just mention them to God in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you. We thank you, God, for the hands that have been raised. Father, your people are having different desires and you alone, Jehovah, can meet our desires with good things. Be it health, it's you, God, who can heal us. Be it peace, yes, God, you are shalom, the God of peace. Be it, Jehovah, different needs, nothing is impossible with you. So I commit my sister, I commit my brother, I commit all these children into your able hands, God, as a sign of showing that they have different needs, Jehovah. They've lifted up their hands and I pray I pray, Jehovah, that you will not bypass them. I pray, Jehovah, that you will minister to them. I pray that you will meet with that need in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Father, we thank you because you are doing it. Father, we thank you because you are healing. Father, we thank you because you are touching that need. Father, we thank you because you are revealing yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We bless you. And church, let's continue praying. Let's praise God. God, that he is doing it, that he is doing it for us, that he is doing it for them, that he is doing it for the glory and honor of his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. But even as we pray, I want to remember Jonathan Muthuku, brother to brother to Kevin, Kev, teacher Kevin and Rachel Kavita, who was not feeling well and they underwent through surgery yesterday. I thank you God that the surgery was successful and I pray for, for Mutuku God that you are going to heal him, that you will continue healing him in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you because you are a great healer. We thank you because we call on you Jehovah and you came through. We thank you Father because the surgery was successful in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you God because 
because you are there for us. We thank you because you are a great comforter. Even now, Jehovah, as we pray for Pastor Lea, Lea Bulemi and Mr. Edward, who lost their father, we commit them into your able hands right now, Jehovah, and we pray that you will minister to them. We pray, Jehovah, that you will comfort them. We pray, Jehovah, that you will be with them in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that even as they plan for the burial on Thursday, we pray that you will be with them, you will provide for them, and you will minister to them in the name of Jesus. We also pray for our, our former elder, Dr. Mwangeli Muthuku, who was the former honorary treasurer who lost their mother Jehovah. I commit Mongeli and the family into your able hands and I pray even as they go through this time Jehovah, I pray that you will comfort her. I pray that you will walk with them. I pray that you will provide for them. I pray Jehovah that as a church will surround these brethren Jehovah and encourage them and walk to with them, Jehovah, through this grieving period in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we honor you, Jehovah. We also want to commit our country into your able hands, Jehovah, because of the accident that happened last week, Jehovah, and many people lost their lives. We pray for their families, Jehovah. We pray for the entire army, Jehovah. We pray for this country, Jehovah. We are in a, we are in a state of mourning. We pray that you will be with us, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you be with us, Jehovah? Would you be with us and comfort us and walk with us in the name of Jesus. We pray for ourselves, Jehovah. There are many needs that your people have. There are many needs, Jehovah, that we are presenting to you. And we ask that you will walk with us. And we ask that you will answer our needs. And we ask, Jehovah, that you will guide our steps. And we ask, Jehovah, that you will assure us of your presence. For you say that you will never leave us, neither would you forsake us. We praise your name and we honor you. We thank you, Father, because you are doing it. We thank you because you are doing it for the for honor and glory of your name. For it's in Jesus' name I do believe and pray. Amen. Thank you. You may have your seats. Good good morning, church. How are you today? Thank you for coming. My name is Tamara and I will be your service leader of today together with Nema Wanjiro. And thank you worship team for that amazing for those amazing songs. <clears throat> Nema, do you remember what is happening today? Um, are we eating breakfast in church? Oh no. Didn't you don't you remember what Shina said? Today is the child led service of 2024. Maybe I wasn't attentive when she was talking. Or maybe you weren't listening. And if you are a first time visitor or you went somewhere for a very long time and you finally come back to, and you finally come back to the Nairobi Baptist Church, kindly stand up. Give them a clap as they stand. We would love to know you more. So after this service, go to the exit one on my left hand side. You will, there you will have a meet and greet with some of our welcomers. You may take your seats. Nema, do you remember what is happening next? Yes, that is the part I can never forget. Oh, I thought you forgot again. Um, I think we have some announcements. Media team, kindly pro project the announcements. Welcome to the Nairobi Baptist Church, Ngong Road, on this, the 21st of April, 2024. Thank you for making time to attend our hybrid Sunday service, Karibuni Sana. Our mission is to be a worshiping community of the Lord Jesus Christ that is advancing the kingdom of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. The following are our notices and upcoming events for this week. Our midweek hybrid prayer service is every Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. This is the place where we spend time in church-wide prayers and petition God over different issues. By prayer, we can move on. The NBC Marriage Enrichment Ministry invites all couples for a fun day out on Labor Day, the 1st of May, 2024, at the Bong Road Forest Sanctuary from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. 
The day will be facilitated by Don and Pastor Cynthia Wamboy of Cheno of Lamid Network. Plenty of fun activities have been lined up and lunch will be provided. Registration per couple is 1900 Kenya shillings, payable via Mpesta Pay Bill 516-500. The account is couples plus the name of the couple. Registration closes on the 28th of April, 2024. Please forward the Mpesa confirmation message to Isabel at 0722-773206 for reconciliation purposes. If you've ever watched a war movie, you've probably noticed that every time an army wants to take new territory, they send their best equipped soldiers to that place. Sometimes what they want to do is to defend either a key installation or a key location, and they send their best equipped soldiers to that place. For Nairobi Baptist Church to fulfill its vision to be a Christ-centered church with strong families that are transforming nations, then we need to be a well-equipped army of Christ Jesus in order to do this. Well instructed in Christian doctrine, in evangelism and discipleship, in missions and outreach, understanding together what it is that the Lord Jesus Christ has called us to do through the Great Commission. This is the goal of the 318 Leadership Development Program. The training is open to individuals within and outside Nairobi Baptist Church, and so you're free to invite family and friends, both within and outside NBC, to participate in this program. For those who wish to register for the program, please send your details, your name, and your contact to info at nairobibaptist.co.ke. That is info at nairobibaptist.co.ke. We have different uh, arrangements that we've made in our different assemblies for the training. NBC Kibra and NBC Ongata Rongai will have the training in person every Sunday after their services beginning the 28th of April 2024. NBC Ngong Road and NBC Kikuyu will have their trainings online every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m beginning the 30th of April. NBC Westlands will have online classes every Saturday, every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and they will begin on the 4th of May this year. Last but not least, NBC Kitengela will have the training in person every Sunday after their services beginning the 5th of May this year. Please register either through the email address given or you can register at the assembly office that is closest to you or after the service on Sunday, you can register at the registration desks for 318. Come, let us learn together so that we may grow together and are better equipped to serve together. The Lord bless you. Hi, I hope this finds you well. My name is Wangari Benson, one of the pastors here in Nairobi Baptist Church, specifically serving in the discipleship ministry. My journey with God started a few years ago. Um, I was a church attender. Uh, I was even serving, but I had not given my life to Christ. And one bold lady began a relationship with me, pursuing me, and before long we were having tea, and she led me to Christ, and she took me on a journey of discipleship. It was intentional, we met every Wednesday and she taught me the word of God. She taught me how to pray, she taught me to read the word of God, things that we would uh, as assume that someone knows just because they have grown up in the church. She taught me how really the rubber meets the road, that uh, moving from head knowledge of just knowing scriptures to actually living them, to practicing them. That has been my journey of discipleship. She's the one who pushed me from my comfort zone to begin to disciple, to begin to reach out. And for a few weeks, after three months of being discipled, we took some time and we prayed and for God to show me uh, young ladies that I can begin to, to work with. And she encouraged me on that journey to approach them and to do the same thing that she had done with me. For me, discipleship 
is, is not a scary word. It's not a big word as we see. For me, discipleship is being taught to follow the Lord. It is intentional. Uh, it's not uh, a random process. It is instructional in the sense that you are taught the word of God. It is about love. It is intimate. So this person loves on you. They care for you. They are present. I remember they came all the way to Nakuru for my graduation. That for me is discipleship. This year, Nairobi Baptist Church and Parklands Baptist Church are bringing us the Family Discipleship Conference that will be hosted right here in Nairobi Baptist Church. These two amazing churches have been partnering for a number of years now to bring us this conference. And the aim has been to continually ask ourselves one question. Will there come a time when one generation will not know the Lord as we find it in Judges 2.10? We hope not. We hope that as we take on the mandate of discipleship, this amazing tool that we have been given to teach, to teach on marriage, to teach on how to bring up our children, to teach on, 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 on gender roles as the Bible sees it, to teach, 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 that we will bring up a generation that is faithful and trusts the Lord and will continue teaching others in all the generations to come. And so this year, our theme is One Generation Away. Hashtag tell the generation. The conference will be on the 4th of May from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Do not miss out as we come to be equipped on which open doors are there that we can take advantage of and disciple this nation, to disciple all nations of the world, but also as we come to be equipped on how to actually reach out and disciple so that no one is left out. And our keynote speaker will be Dr. George Ogalo. We hope to see you. For these and other events taking place, kindly refer to the weekly church bulletin. In all seasons, we desire to continue growing into a Christ-like church that is building strong families and transforming nations. Have a blessed Sunday and a fruitful week ahead. And now I am sure that the media team has some financial reports for us. My name is Arthur Kamal, and this morning I'm privileged to present to us our financial report for the first quarter of this year, that is the three months to 31st March. I will present three primary reports, a cash flow statement, a statement of financial position, that is a balance sheet, and then we look at our income statement, the, and, and a bridged one, just a summary. On the slide before you, we start with the cash flow statement, and on this particular slide, we've got the incomes, the amounts received in that quarter, quarter one was 58.7 million shillings, as you'll observe, most of that uh, came from uh, tithes and offerings, which is 51.2 million shillings. Uh, rental income, net of rental expenses was 5.6 million. The rental expenses are mostly uh, maintenance, the cost of maintaining those properties. On the next slide, we've got the outflows from the 58 uh, million shillings that was received. How did we spend that amount? We've got 53 million shillings there. You will observe that the largest amount is uh, staff and ministry costs, which is uh, normally our biggest uh, expense. We also repaid the loan, 5 million shillings, the principal, repayment of the principal amount, and we also repaid 3.6 uh, million shillings in terms of uh, interest. You will recall that this is the loan that we took some years back to purchase the property on which uh, we hope to settle our Westlands uh, church. Designated funds, the outflow was 11 million shillings. Designated funds are funds that are collected for a particular purpose and are later utilized for that, uh, that purpose. I'll now move on to our next uh, statement of financial position or the balance sheet. We'll start at looking at the assets. Uh, and as you'll observe, property plant and equipment, 2.1 billion shillings as of March, which was the same number in the audited accounts as of 31st December last year. The next amount there is cash and bank balances, 23.7 million shillings compared to 18 million shillings at the beginning of the year. We are glad we had the 23 million shillings, 23.7, because when we look at our liabilities, you will see that we've got liabilities of nearly the same amount. That will be on the next slide when we get to it. Accounts receivable are basically amounts due from uh, uh, tenants on, on rentals, which are invoiced on a monthly basis. These uh, properties are being managed by the Nairobi Baptist Investment Company. We'll move on to liabilities now. 
and we've also just got three lines there summarized of the balance sheet. You will see accounts payable and accruals, 21.2 million shillings. Accounts payable are basically creditors. So that is 21.2 million shillings, which would be settled typically within 30 to 60 days. So this liability would have been settled in April using the cash balance uh, that we had. The loan balance, which is a principal loan balance on our balance sheet, is 125 million shillings as of March. It has come down by the 5 million shillings repayment that I indicated uh, was paid on the cash flow statement. I'll now move on to the next slide, which is uh, a summarized uh, income statement. And uh, right at the bottom, this is really what I'll focus on, is the surplus slash deficit. And we've got it, we've got it presented in columnar form in six columns. The first five are the various assemblies. The last one includes our assembly in Kibera and also the mission stations. So you'll observe in column one, total income from Gong Road, 50 million shillings, expenditure 35 million shillings. Gong Road had a 15 million surplus. Now, if you look at NBC Rongai, we had a surplus of 1.3 million shillings, and that basically came from fundraising. There's about 1.3 million shillings that is held in cash that was collected by NBC Rongai and is meant to be utilized for the ongoing construction of the classroom, uh, Sunday school uh, classrooms. The next three columns, Westlands, Kikuyu, Kitengela, we'll just look right at the bottom. They've got a deficit of 0 0.9 each, that's just below a million shillings. We must emphasize that this deficit has been coming down as the assemblies have been growing. And we do hope in the coming years, they'll actually be able to fully fund uh, their expenses. The last column is uh, Kibera, where we have uh, an assembly, but we also have a mission station in terms of a clinic. And also it includes our other mission stations. The total expenses was six million shillings. We spent six million shillings, and we were able to recover in income 1.2 million shillings. So brothers and sisters, that brings me to the end of our presentation this morning. I just want to thank you on behalf of the pastoral leadership of the church, on behalf of the elders for your continued faithful giving. And we do ask that we continue so that we are able to meet our budget for the year. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, media team, for the awesome things you keep on doing. May God bless you. And keep shining bright. And now we would like to invite the drama team. Guys, guys, guess, hey Pato, check out Celeste's latest post. She's got a million followers. Tonui, put that phone away. We are doing our Bible studies now. Wow, look at all those famous influencers. I can't wait to get that autographs and take selfies with them. Yeah, they look so cool. I just want to be like them when I grow up. What are influencers? They're kind of like celebrity show show. Back in my day, we didn't have influencers. We had the good book and common sense. But grandma, Celeste has the coolest devotionals and her selfies with Bible verses. So inspiring. Grandma, what do you think? Celeste's hair might be heavenly, but her theology, not so much. Beware of influencers who water down God's word. Grandma, Celeste just posted her latest pic, hashtag blessed life. What do you think? Sue, hashtags don't save souls, but here's one for you. Hashtag seek Jesus, not status. Today, we're 
are talking about grace, glitter, and Gucci. Swipe up for salvation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also share. Excuse me, Mr. Lest. I am the real influencer here, Pastor B, or should I say, Reverend? Like and follow me for miracles, signs, and wonders. And not just likes. All you have to do is make a donation. You know, plant a seed. Hashtag, hashtag planting seeds, seeds, hashtag miracles, hashtag wonders, hashtag blessed. Do you believe these guys are to Christ, are to miracles, are to blessed? They are so yes, Daddy. Right? We are the ones who know about that blessed life. It's all about manifesting. I really wanted our family to go to Dubai last year. I manifested it, putting it out there into the universe. And guess what? We went to Dubai in December. Yeah, it's just making sure the energies of the universe align. Our family, we've gone back to our roots. We are always at Gong Hills praying to our ancestors. Hashtag, hashtag new age, hashtag, 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 hashtag traditions, hashtag, hashtag blessed. Did you hear? Tonui just unfollowed Celeste. Drama alert. <gasps> Tonui, why? Celeste post luck depth. I have realized faith isn't a filter, Patrick. It's a relationship with Jesus. A genuine relationship with Jesus. Children, let's remember. Celebrities come and go. But Jesus remains. Reject false teachings. Even if they were designer robes. And can we put that phone down? Even dad and mama on the phone. Okay, okay. But grandma, what about
Nautilus. Follow Jesus fast. If the Lord points to him, great. If not, unfollow. Our faith isn't a popularity contest. It's a heart transformation. Guys, guys, guess who else is trending? Who? Pastor Reverend Dr. Apostle Benji. What has he done this time? One of his followers posted that he is a con artist. Do you remember that left guy he healed last week? His neighbor sold him out. He has never been lame. Whoa, he has lost so many followers. Why are church leaders misleading people? People are not following God's teachings. We must repent. May God forgive us. Wah, 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 wah. Who is that with so many followers? Hey, Yawa, he has so many followers. Who is that? He's not even trending. Tanoi, that's Jesus. Jesus? Hiya, Jesus. What do you mean he is not trending? Yes, everyone has been talking about his crucifixion and resurrection. Wow! Jesus, what are you doing here? I just wanted to remind you that while these influencers may seem cool, it's important to follow me and my teachings above all else. Um, excuse me, but I think you're forgetting that I'm the one with a million followers and endorsement deals. Who needs Jesus when you can have me? But Jesus, how do we know who to follow? It's simple, my dear children. Look for influencers who lead with love, mm -hmm. kindness, and humility. And always remember to question what you see and hear on social media, especially when it comes to matters of faith. Remember, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Read the scriptures for yourselves and the Holy Spirit will always guide you. Uh, I think I'm going to go update my Instagram and TikTok feeds. Me too. Thanks, Jesus. We'll always remember you to follow you above all the other influencers out there. That's what I like to hear. Now, who's up for some selfies with the King of Kings? Me!
would like to invite Sheris to read the Bible for us. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Today I'm going to be reading Revelation 2, 12 to 17. And it says, to the church in Pergamum, to the angel of the church in Pergamum writes, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are, there are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice his Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to, sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. And that is the word of the Lord. And that's the word of the Lord. And now I would like to invite the pastor. Give him a round of applause as he comes. I would like to pray for the pastor. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Thank you, everlasting Father, for this day. Thank you for your care and protection. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing our pastor here safely. And even as we are, we are yet to hear your word, we ask you to open our, mouth, our ears and hearts so that we may receive it without any problems. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Wow. Hasn't that just been amazing? Being able to be led by our very children and grandchildren. Hasn't scripture come alive today that out of the mouth of babes he has ordained praise to silence the foe? Isn't that true of what we have heard? Hasn't God spoken to us through our children? Indeed, it is true. Childlike faith to pursue God with that kind of innocence and purity for the glory of his name. Once again, let's appreciate the Lord for our children. I now have the very difficult task of preaching after them and sharing from the passage that was read to us. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. Now, moms and dads, uncles and aunties, uh, grandpas and granddads, I will try and tone down the language just a bit because of some of the things that this passage brings about because we have children. So where I say ungodly relationships, just know they refer to what has been mentioned in that particular text. But where I will directly mention something, it is my prayer and urge that you have some of these conversations with your children. Because the devil is not shy to teach them this thing and to teach them wrongly so that he can turn them away from the ways of the Lord. And so where you may feel that perhaps the pastor was a bit too much, please, I beg you, see that as a privilege and an opportunity for you to pick up these conversations with your children. When they ask you what this meant that the pastor talked about, create that as an opportunity for you to talk to them. Amen? Amen. 
Shall we get to it then? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. These are the opening lines in Charles Dickens' book, A Tale of Two Cities. The best and the worst, wisdom and foolishness, belief and incredulity, light and darkness, hope and despair. Opposite extremes in some sort of harmonious coexistence. This was nothing but a coexistence of contradictions. Yet this was the state of the church in Pergamum. They received glowing commendation, but also received damning condemnation from the Lord Jesus. They had succeeded and yet failed at the same time. Now, children, let me ask you for a moment. How many like to succeed? Let me see by a show of hands. All right. Now, how many like to fail? None of us. Now, imagine getting a report card from school. And as you look at it, the initial uh, topics and, and, and subjects, you have A's that are glaring and, you know, excited kicks, uh, excitement kicks in and, you know, there is joy rising in your heart. And then when you get to the bottom, there are E's. And all of a sudden, your joy turns to sorrow. Your report card is a source of your joy, but at the same time, a source of your sorrow. Now imagine the church of Pergamum reading this letter and hearing the Lord Jesus speak to them. They get excited when they hear the nice things that Jesus is saying about them. They are joyous because of the successes that Jesus is praising them for. But then the tone of the letter changes and now their joy turns to sorrow. Jesus is also rebuking them for their failure. Now today I want us to learn from this church. From both their success and their failure as well so that we may imitate those things that led to their success and avoid those things that led to their failure by the way the bible says suffer the little children to come to me and so don't 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 worry so much about what children are doing children are being children there's a reason jesus said suffer the little children to come to me there's an element of us suffering you know, when children are around us. So let's allow children to be children. Is that okay? Is that okay? All right, all right. Please don't be too distracted, but let's appreciate the Lord. Also for our Sunday school teachers who actually have to be with our children Sunday after Sunday, I think they deserve a, loud, a, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. So let us learn then from this church of Pergamum and um, what I want to share, I want to share from two movements in this particular text. I want us to see that the church in Pergamum was actually faced by two kind of enemies. They were faced by external enemies, but also they were faced by internal enemies. They were able to succeed on one end, but fail on the other end. They succeeded through perseverance, but they failed by pollution. So let's look at the first of that enemy and their success through perseverance. In verse 13, this is what Jesus writes to the church in Pergamum. Well, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Now, 
Those are the kind of words you can't read and just continue as though you have not read something significant. Jesus says and describes the region of Pergamum as where Satan's throne is and as where Satan dwells. These words are not contained anywhere else in scripture. They are only used to describe the church at Pergamum. Now, I must hasten to say that this is a figure of speech. Now, Satan does not have any physical body, and so he does not dwell in Pergamum in a physical sense per se. But this is a figure of speech to communicate the kind of place that Pergamum was. That phrase where Satan has his dwelling, where Satan has his throne, means two major things. First, it means that the activities and the works of Satan were more concentrated in Pergamum. But also it means and was more concentrated in Pergamum above everywhere else. Now we know that the Bible does call Satan the God of this age, right? But all of us also know that there are certain places that the activity of Satan seems to be a bit more than in other places. Pergamum happened to be that place. Now, during this particular period, in the reign of the Roman Empire, the many regions in the Roman Empire were idolatrous. They worshipped various gods, including emperor worship. But Pergamum was different because over and above the various gods that they worshipped, over and above that they had created these edifices, you know, for, for the god of Zeus, for, uh, for the emperor, and the, it seems as though emperor worship was more concentrated there. Yet there was one particular god that was unique to Pergamum. Pergamum was no, known for the worship of a god called Asclepius, who was considered the god of healing. And they had put a magnificent temple for this particular god. I have never been there, but from the little reading I have read, I am told if you go, um, the city currently is called Pergamos, you know, in Greece. If you go to Pergamos, you will actually see the ruins of this particular temple. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The symbol for this god was an animal. And guess which animal? A snake. A serpent. Now, when you read throughout scripture, we know what the snake represents, right? We know what the serpent represents. And so what happened at that time is they had some sort of a stick, you know, that had a serpent wound on it. You know, that would be a point of reference in worship, but also to plead for healing. And by the way, and this is just an aside, if you look at major organizations that actually provide health care, do you know what their symbol is? Exactly. This is the origin. And I think Pergamum must have been an extremely difficult place to live as a Christian. The influence and the activities of Satan everywhere. But this is the comfort that they receive from Christ. This is what gives them joy and excitement because Jesus says, I know where you live. I know. I know that it is hard for you. I know that Satan dwells there. I know that the influence of Satan is a bit more concentrated there. I know that the activity of Satan is a bit more concentrated there. Jesus says, I know. I know. And some of us perhaps are in environments that, to be honest, it seems like Satan makes his abode here. Some of us, perhaps for us children, it's school. There are just things that happen in school that are so difficult, and there are things you're taught in Sunday school, and the things that happen in your school, and there's such a contradiction in those things. It just seems like the influence of Satan is actually in your school. For some of us, it's work. Your office. Tomorrow is Monday. Are you excited about that? Let us not go there. 
But for some of us, it's, 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 it's our workplaces, the things that happen there. In fact, some of us are in workplaces where there you open a Bible, there you mention the name of Christ, and you'll be summoned by HR. By policy, you can actually be released. Some of us are in business, and the kind of industry you are in, that is where Satan actually does his deals. And you've been unable to progress in your business because it seems as though for you to progress, then you must compromise on your Christian faith. And it is difficult for you. Some of us, it's perhaps our family is your, maybe the only one that is saved in your family. And the activities that go on in your families grieve your heart. This is the encouragement from Jesus this morning. I know. I know your situation. I know where you live. Now, boys and girls, uncles and aunties, moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, Jesus knows. Whatever your situation is, however difficult it is, Jesus knows. And yet, despite this difficult situation that the believers in Pagamam were in, and the persecution that they suffered as a result, including one of them, Antipas, that the passage mentions, being murdered for his faith, they persevered. They did not deny their faith in Christ. They still held on to the name of Christ. They refused to let go of that name. This was their success perseverance in the face of trouble. The external enemy, Satan, and his activities, and his influences, the persecutions, the tribulations, the trials, all those external enemies, they were able to succeed in the face of those enemies. Their lives were at risk, but they continued being faithful. To Christ, they still persevered. Yet it is the same for us this morning. If we are to be successful in our Christian faith, we must persevere. We must endure the trials and troubles that come our way and continue holding fast to the name of Christ. Because remember, He knows. He knows. So let us strive to succeed against all those external enemies. Strive to still be that bright shining light at school, in your workplace, in your business environment, at home. Strive to be that one voice of reason in that space. I know it is difficult, Jesus will say, but I know. But I know. But secondly, I wish the letter ended with only praise from Jesus that they had persevered. But unfortunately that is not the case. This church failed against the enemy within. Their failure was as a result of the pollution within. This is how the Bible reads in verse 14 and 15. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Now in the church in Pergamum, there was a teaching that crept in, propagated by a few people that was extremely dangerous. You know, I was seated there with Pastor Wangare and I told her, I think today the Lord is speaking. I had the, the dramatization that we had here from the children. And I remembered how the, led, the Lord had led me in my sermon preparation. And today, brothers and sisters, the Lord is speaking to us. There is a kind of teaching that had permeated the church in Panam, pa, uh, Pagamum. And Jesus uses two phrases to describe that kind of teaching. He says there are some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam. Who taught Balak to put a stumbling block. And I want us to remember that phrase, a stumbling block to the children of Israel so that they may eat food offered to idols and practice sexual immorality. And they say, so also you have 
some there who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Now the two are somewhat related. Balaam being an Old Testament figure helps us to see what was happening in the church through the Nicolaitan teaching. In other words, what Balaam was to the children of Israel, the Nicolaitans were to the church in Pergamum. And so if you're wondering what was the teaching of the Nicolaitans, it was the same teaching that Balaam taught Balak to help the people involve themselves in idol worship and practice ungodly relationships. There it comes. So then what is this teaching of Balaam? You will have to go all the way to Numbers chapter 22 to chapter 24. The children of Israel are out of Egypt. They're in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. They have conquered certain enemies. Og and Sihon, these mighty kings. And Balak, the king of the Moab, knows these people will completely annihilate us. And so he sends forth for an individual by the name Balaam. And says, come, curse these people on my behalf. Because everyone that you curse is cursed. And everyone that you bless is blessed. You can check that in Numbers chapter 22 verse 6. But at first, Balaam refuses to go because God forbids him to go. And why does God forbid him to go? This is what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 22 verse 12. God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. A lesson for us here, brothers and sisters. No one can curse the one that God has blessed. Oh, I hope some of us will be delivered. From wondering, I don't know what my neighbors in a country will do to me. Are you a child of God? No one, no individual, not even Satan himself can curse the one that God has blessed. And so Balaam initially says, I will not go. I am forbidden by the Lord. But after several requests, eventually he gives in and he goes. And so he tries, when you read again, chapter 22, chapter 24 of the book of Numbers, four times. He tries to curse the children of Israel, but he can only bless them. And Balak is furious, I called you to curse these people. Now you're blessing them, don't even say anything. A second time, he blesses them. A third time, he blesses them. A fourth time, he blesses them. Why? Because no one, listen to me children, no one, can curse you if God has blessed you. And if you have put your faith in Jesus, no one can curse you because God has blessed you. So eventually they part ways. But you turn to chapter 25 of the book of Numbers and a sad story is narrated there because we learn that the children of Israel turned away from God. They began to have relationships, there it comes again, with the women of Moab. And then began to worship their gods. And as a result, God was angry at them. And he brought judgment upon them. What Balak, their enemy, with the help of Balaam could not do, the children of Israel did to themselves. They brought a curse upon themselves by turning away from the God who had saved them. And worshipping the gods of their enemies. Now, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, it is not external enemies that we should fear. Rather, it is internal enemies, the enemies within, that we should fear the most. Story after story in scripture, history keeps reminding us of men and women that fell greatly because they did not take care of their internal enemies. Now, what does this have to do with Balaam? Because we said all he did was bless the children of Israel. Chapter 25, they turned away. So why is he mentioned now in Revelation chapter 2? When you read Numbers chapter 31 verse 16, this is what the Bible says. And you can read context. I avoided context, again, for the reason I mentioned. Behold, this 
on Balaam's advice, caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And so the plague came up among the congregation of the Lord. On Balaam's advice. Balaam realizing that you can't curse what God has blessed, he actually came up with a brilliant idea. If you can only turn them away from their God, your mission will be accomplished. You may not be able to win against them with swords and clubs, but if only you cause them to turn away from their God, you don't need to cast them. Oh, that enemy that you consider to be an enemy of yours doesn't need to curse you. If you only turn away from your God, that witchcraft that you are so afraid of will come upon you. And by the way, the aim of the enemy has always been to turn us away from God. That was what he wanted to do with Job. Do you wonder why the wife tells him, cast God and die? The aim was not the afflictions. It was that Job would denounce his living God. Balaam taught Balak what would get the children of Israel cursed. He taught Balak how to put a stumbling block to the children of Israel. And now Jesus says to the church in Pergamum, there are those in Thank you, Paul. All right. Yeah. Why do I say thank you again? 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 Why do I say Where was I? Again? 